So negative experiences can make up your identity and uh, just say for example my childhood it wasn't the greatest childhood and I identified with it and these are things that I have to drop off to stop it you know because I'm old already so I'm also for like past relationships they're done already they, they help me grow they serve their purpose and I just shouldn't use my energy to even think about it uh, just take these lessons and learn it with a grain of salt people will hurt you and sometimes the people you love the most can hurt you the most because you know you you let your defenses down you give them everything and then uh when, when it's time for them to dip out they dip out and i've been on the other side too like where uh, i just felt like i wasn't a good person and then i just left you know because I, I thought that uh they the people they would be better off without me and it wasn't them it was me some sometimes people say it's it's not you or it's me and they're lying but uh, when, when, when I said it, it's true, you know, that if, if I didn't have love for myself, if, if I didn't feel these things, then there's no way that I could give it to somebody. And if, if, if I knew that I couldn't fulfill their wants, then there's no point to, to continue because, for example, having a baby, I'm not interested in that. Like, it's not going to help me, you know. Because that, that's one of my biggest fears is to have a kid and to struggle in life, to be poor, to repeat the cycle. I, I know how it feels to not have love and, and to struggle and be poor. And to be an outsider in school, not to speak, you know, a second Asian language. It's just uh, to, to be an introvert. That's how I grew up, and I, I don't necessarily want to identify with that label anymore. So maybe I should stop saying that I'm an introvert, even though I, I lean towards that side. And not, I, I know I should, you know, try, try and smile more, talk to more people, and it would take time. I'm, I'm just trying not to rush it, but there is urgency because it's kind of like an hourglass where my sands of time are leaving me because you don't get the time back. So your childhood, your economic status, your education, your looks can determine who you are. You know, when you should be doing things to improve. Uh, some people die young and they're not buried until they're 75. And I think that uh, I stopped growing when I was a kid because uh, from just say, for example, from one to 39, I, I didn't necessarily know if I was going to contact my mother or uh, if I was going to feel fill the void in my heart. But I, I did and I'm learning, I'm adapting. So, uh, so sometimes when, when you hit, hit rock bottom, when you strip away all of the distractions that you can focus on your core problems. And I, I, I see certain problems because I have them. And maybe I solved them and maybe I didn't. <laughs> It's kind of like acne where there is no cure. Here you can only uh, reduce it or mitigate it and improve it, but you'll never get a, you'll never get rid of the problem. So it's something that you will be working on for the rest of your life. There, there are many battles to be fought, and the the war will never be over. You you always have these these problems or challenges. So do do what you need to do to get what you really want. Uh, figure it out. Because if, if, if you don't figure out what you want to do and where you want to go, other people will dictate these things for you. And kind people die with friends. People with money can die without friends. And there was a quote that said, write your own obituary and learn. Warren Buffett said this, but I'm not sure if he's the original quoter. Uh, write your obituary and learn how to live up to it and it's true that you know what do you want to re be remembered for uh well what's the purpose of your life where where do you want to go and for for me i always thought that i needed to help myself but it's more about me helping myself self so that i could help other people and i think that that would truly make me happy in life and I, I don't necessarily have to be a millionaire, but it's something that I would like to accomplish well, within my lifetime. And, and I do see 
that it is possible because other people did it before. Uh, when, when you're walking into the gym or when, when you're going to begin your, your workout or, you know, even when I went for my run this morning, I, I just didn't have a shirt on. And, and you have to say to yourself, it's showtime. It's time to per perform for your fans. You're the star of your show. You're the professional athlete. So I, I normally don't wear, you know, jerseys, sports stuff like that with other people's names um, obviously my jujitsu gi that i have it has half gracie on it i just bought that gi to support the gym but going forward um, i will not be wearing someone else's name on my back because why why would i um, i'm the star uh, I'm, I'm gonna represent myself rather than uh write someone else's name in my opinion that, that that's why I more resonate with uh, individual sports versus a team sport. But I, I do have respect for, for talent, such as the top martial artists or top basketball people, uh, top authors. So there's something called a clock test. And he was saying that if you're watching the clock to see how much time you have left, to stay there versus watching the clock to see how much time you have left to accomplish your goals. Uh, it, it says a lot about what you're doing and well, whether or not you, you want to be there or not. Because <laughs> when you're working a job, it's like time doesn't go by fast enough. Because I remember working at the airport or chilling, uh, checking tickets or telling people to push their bags into the x-ray machine or, you know, that job. It was cool for the year, but it, it's a boring job. Versus uh, when, when you're in software, you're, you're paid to solve problems on. It's a fun job. You don't have enough time to solve all of these problems. So there, there's a big difference between a job and a career. Uh, uh, there, there would be some times where I would be working into the night. And since I'm a salary work, I, I wouldn't be getting paid extra. But it's kind of like a puzzle where I'm trying to figure out a problem. And I, I just wouldn't be able to sleep unless I, I try to solve the problem and it's frustrating and it's fun at the same time. So, sometimes you get lost trying to figure out the solutions to these challenges. So another challenge that I have is hyperthyroid. It's a condition when the gland produces too much um, thyroid hormone and it causes a uh, loss of sleep, anxiety, loss of weight, anxiety, tremors, irregular heartbeat. and I could solve it through medication or surgical procedures. I chose not to do the surgical procedures because I wanted to work on uh, balancing my diet. So I would have to reduce uh, caffeine, alcohol, uh, prevent myself to be in certain situations such as driving and heavy traffic, uh, reduce stress, get better sleep, yoga, meditate, have deep breathing exercises, get better quality of sleep, more sleep, Exercise regularly, get at least 30, 30 minutes of moderate exercise on most days of the week. Focus on herb supplements, uh, get fatty acids, ashwagandha, magnesium, and they said acupuncture. I tried it one time, I personally didn't like it, but sometimes it takes more interactions to see if something's working or not. So that, that's why it's important for you to, to track the things that you're doing. And so, like I was saying before, sometimes you can't cure it, but you can mitigate it. So try, check out those free books. And uh, I hope you guys have a good Thursday. And I hope you guys have a great weekend as well. All right, please like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what other content uh, you want me to speak on or to learn about. And I, I hope you guys have an, uh, a good week. All right, bye.